We have seen uh, in uh, the segment related to hate speech and incitement speech that um, courts have tended to criminalize uh, incitement speech and uh, governments have tended to legislate quite heavily against uh, hate speech and, of course, incitement speech. However, there are questions that may be asked and have been asked as to whether criminalization of hate speech is always the best answer to, to give to, to this kind of, um, of speech. Indeed, in the United States, as I have highlighted in one of the segments, such speech are not uh, the object of uh, legal interference. This is not to argue that under some conditions, restrictions to freedom of expression may not be legitimate. Indeed, as we have seen, um, there are forms of incitement to violence which may be and should be the object of, of, um, of regulations, including legal reg regulation. But I think it is very important to ask whether these work or are sufficient to prevent the spread of incitement speech and uh, the spread of hate speech in particular. These are questions which are particularly important in the online context where hate speech does spread well and fast and criminalization of such, such speech is actually difficult because of the number uh, because of their quantity, because of their speed, because of their countries of origin. So it is important to identify alternative ways of responding to those speech which are found to be uh, a direct impediment and obstacle to the realization of other rights, including the very important right to equality and to dignity. So how can we respond? To, um, to hate speech and to a lesser extent to incitement speech. Over the, uh, the years, um, responses have taken different forms. They, some of them are focus, have focused on the speech itself, others on the speakers, yet others on the means of circulation or communication, and uh, as well on the audience and the target group. So I'm going to consider each one of these particular focus and identify some of the measures that have been taken. The first one is a focus on the speech. There are um, ways of dealing with the, the hate speech, the hatred or the incitement speech. And that can be done through the so-called counter speech. Uh, counter narrative, and that's uh, a narrative that seeks to contribute to building a culture of equality, to demonstrate solidarity, but also it's a speech that denounces um, the hate, hate speech. It's a speech that denounces the hatred, that refutes the um, hatred through counter example, that discredit it, that plant seeds of doubt. It's basically a kind of speech that provides alternative and progressive interpretation. And you can find a number of examples of counter speech throughout the online world, but also the material world. For instance, um, in Australia, there was a very important campaign called I Will Ride With You, which brought seven million people together that expressed solidarity with um, the Muslim citizen of Australia that were the object of uh, bullying and indeed hatred. Um, there are campaigns of uh, counter speech around um, Bring Back Our Girls, for instance, which is about the, the Nigerian girl. And a focus here is to create viral content, to create viral trend, and to harness the power of speech to counter hatred and to counter hate speech. A second focus is to uh, focus on the speakers. Here, that can be done through, um, through various ways. It's more complicated, potentially. It's about a direct or online intervention with the speakers of hatred. Uh, it's about working with and through 
uh, members of hate groups or indeed ex-members of hate groups. Indeed, um, people who work in the field have often pointed out that um, the um, former uh, hate speakers, former members of extreme uh, violent groups are often the best actors to communicate with those that are still sticking to hatred. I'm just going to give you, for instance, the example of um, a non-governmental uh, organization in Sweden called EXIT. It's a grassroots organization, uh, and all its staff, are, or most of its staff, are made up of former violent extremist members. Uh, the NGO itself supports the rehabilitation of individuals who identify with neo-Nazi movement and also nowadays with um, violent Islamist movement. The, the NGO recognized the importance of online community bonding process and, and has begun the um, exploration of online engagement strategies in order to address uh, and to interact directly with the speakers of hatred. A third uh, focus is the uh, focus on the audience. Who is this audience uh, listening, responding to hatred. And here there are some uh, important concepts that have been in place in various parts of the world, particularly in post-conflict society. There is the idea of inoculating the audience against the appeal of hatred, of strengthening the community's capacity to resist the call for hatred and violence. There is one example of um, intervention with the audience, which I particularly like. It's the one uh, conducted by a radio called Radio Benevolencia. It's also a non-governmental organization which empowers group and individual who are the target of hate speech and who are uh, not only the target, but who are also the, uh, the, the audience for hate speech. So Radio Benevolencia broadcast uh, radio soap, discussion and educational programs in combination with grassroots activities that provide citizens in vulnerable societies with knowledge on how to recognize and resist manipulation to violence and how to um, heal trauma and to uh, be active in um, the response to incitement and, and to violence. So this is the concept of inoculation, inoculation with the tools to resist incitement to violence and to hatred. Of course, uh, a, a, a fourth focus is to work directly with the group that are targeted with hatred, to demonstrate solidarity, to advocate on, on their behalf, both in legal and policy terms, to call for equality and non-discrimination, to undertake strategic litigation, including indeed on cases related to speech. So that's um, um, another kind of interventions, which is uh, very important and is also uh, seeking to empower the target groups in order for that group to respond itself to the hatred. Different form of intervention, and one that is more controversial, is to focus on the means of communications, meaning the television, the radio, the newspaper, and increasingly, of course, the online world. And I said it's controversial because governments around the world have focused heavily on the means of communications. They have focused heavily, in particular, on, on internet, on uh, online media and social media, and uh, online platform, which they consider to be the main avenues through which hatred or incitement speech are propagated. So governments are calling on those private actors to regulate content on their platforms. Basically, they are asking corporations to be responsible for censorship without, in most cases, due process and the intervention of a judge. But I would like to point out here that uh, working with those platforms, working with social media, should not just be 
a question for government. Indeed, there is uh, plenty of examples of civil society, um, minority groups engaging with Facebook, engaging with um, Twitter and others to explain why some speech uh, are um, hatred, why some speech are incitement, and to work with them on the best ways of dealing with such, uh, such speech without necessarily censoring them. Uh, there are many other ways of, of uh, countering the speech which does not amount to censorship. And finally, I think it's important to recognize that uh, there is an important role that government can and should play when it comes to, to hate speech. And here I am not at all talking about the um, regulation of hate speech and the criminalization of hate speech or incitement speech that governments do plenty of. But I think it is important to recognize that governments can also engage in different form of activities which are very important to um, prevent maybe not, but certainly to respond to hatred and to hate speech. First, uh, governments can enable civil society effort to design and deliver uh, alternative narrative campaigns to uh, work against discrimination and more generally to campaign for equality. And to do so, governments must create, must establish a legal regime that promotes uh, and protect uh, civil society. Unfortunately, around the world, civil society has been under attack by uh, many countries and governments. So it is a global problem at the moment. And by restricting the activity of civil society, governments are also restricting the ability of that so civil society to campaign for non-discrimination and for equality and to respond to, uh, to incitement and to, to hate speech. Thirdly, governments should also establish a legal regime that promotes diversity and pluralism of, of expression and of the means of communication. We will see uh, in the following weeks that uh, media regulation is an important uh, attribute of government when it comes to broadcasting in particular, and that in any case, pluralism, indep independence, and diversity of the media are quite central to, uh, to freedom of expression. But these are principles that are also central to uh, the ability to respond to, to hatred. Uh, a diverse and plural media will include uh, diverse viewpoints, will include minority groups able to uh, put forward their perspective, will include refugees, migrants, talking to the media and getting access to the media. This is why pluralism and diversity are actually the allies of, um, of the fight against um, incitement and hate speech. And of course, and ultimately, government should refrain from a speech that directly or indirectly ostracize, dis discriminate, and in some cases, incite violence or discrimination. And let me um, recall here that historically, and currently, in uh, countries around the world, the governments are the main actors of hatred and incitement. That in any places where incitement has actually resulted into act of violence, including into act of mass violence and genocide, this was done through and by government. This was done through and by governments having complete control over the means of communication. So the best thing that governments can do to prevent hate speech, to respond to, to hatred, is to make sure that they themselves are not an actor of discrimination, an actor of incitement, and an actor of hatred. Thank you very much.